Hello ladies and gentlemen, it is Cumley here and today I am happy to bring, these to, bring to you episode number 5 of Cumley Presents, uh, my show apparently about the beer that I drink as well as Heroes of New Earth. Today I'm making another horrible decision to drink beer, uh, I'm drinking a Shiner Heffenweizen, uh, which is one of the only beers that I don't feel bad about drinking like really fucking inappropriately cold. You know, if you're drinking something like an IPA, it's, it's like rude to like ruin it by, by making it so cold, but something like this is like um, the... Um, the snobby uh, Coors Light. I'm gonna go. With, mm. Oh, so good, so good. All right. So today, uh, obviously, what we're looking at is Scandal playing on Soul Stealer. Now, I really wanted to do a Soul Stealer video because, you know, he's one of my favorite heroes, and he's one of the heroes that I haven't felt particularly comfortable playing lately. Um, I've really kind of felt like I've been having a hard time transitioning my Soul Stealer play, which, you know, Demon Hand placement, farming ability, things like that, I think are pretty good. Um, but I'm having a hard time translating that into actual victories. And so I thought it would be beneficial for myself to look at somebody that was very high level, high tier Soul Stealer player. Uh, and so today I've uh, chosen Scandal. Now there are a few different high tier, super super high tier um, Soul Stealer players to pick from. You know, you have the people that you think of right away. There's people like Chu and No Tail and Scandal. Um, and there are a lot of people that really play a lot of Soul Stealer. A lot of action here a little bit at this uh, at this bottom location. It's like he's actually going to be able to just barely get a blow this on this Glacius. Uh, and Soul Stealer is kind of in a bad spot, but uh, not sure if he's going to be able to get away here. Wow, action right off the bat. I did not uh, really see this coming. But if it was going to be by any team, it would probably be this uh, Emperor team. This game is a few months old, I think. I think it's from uh, March. Uh, you can see that the buyback timer, buyback count is at negative one. I believe that's because there's no buyback restriction yet in this game. Um, but as I was saying, you know, there are a lot of people that play quite a lot of Soul Stealer. You know, uh, if you look at the pub game, Scandal is around 10%, No Tail is around 10%, Choose like 4%, but whatever, he's a golden child. Um, but you know, it's kind of here that you really have to play a lot to really, really get the sense um, of what needs to be done on the hero. And so we're going we're gonna to cheat, and we're going to use Scandal's uh, experience to kind of <laughs> teach ourselves. He's being really aggressive here on this Dr. Repulsor. I'm, I'm kind of worried for Scandal here. Uh, yeah, wow, you know, because the base damage on Soul Stealer isn't really that high. Uh, especially compared to something like Attack Repulsor, he should be like five higher. Yeah, he's about five higher. About I can't even. He's exactly five higher. I'm so good. Um, <laughs> you can see that this uh, this poor team is playing really really aggressive on the Soul Stealer. They they don't want him to farm at all. Um, but his team is doing a really good job feeding Regen uh, to Scandal on the Soul Stealer. He did choose to start with the double Duck Boots, double Minor Totem build, uh, which I, I I quite like. Um, you know, typically. What I've been doing is, um, on all of my mids, let me, let me take a drink real quick. On all of my mids, is trying to do, um, as economical openings as possible, right? I really like going the lane with 300 gold in the bank. Um, I really like getting that bottle super quick. I'm not sure that that is something that is necessarily beneficial on Soul Stealer. Um, I think it's definitely a very stylistic thing. I think that it can have its place. But Soul Stealer has such crappy shit base damage um, right at the start of the game until he gets those initial creep kills. And those first couple creep kills are really, really important when you're playing against the Soul Stealer. Right? Because he's not doing crap for damage. He doesn't have Demon Hands yet. You can really kind of use and abuse him. And then as he levels Demon Hands, um, you want to force him to use those to farm creeps and not to harass you. Uh, so, you know, we're going we're gonna to pay attention to how he's using his demon hands, when he chooses to fight, when he chooses just to farm, um, all the kind of timings like that. We see Myrmidon was coming here for a little bit of a gank. Uh, I believe he had a haste rune. Yes, he does. I'm kind of hiding with the replay timer. But uh, just doing a little bit of damage and then having to run away because, you know, those demon hands, even at level 3, um, you know, the, with the level 2 demon hands, they're still doing 75 damage each, uh, which gives you quite a bit of damage output uh, so early in the game. Demon hands are actually, I don't know if you knew this, uh, they're a ridiculous skill. They are completely ridiculous. Uh, they did they did raise the mana cost uh, since this game, and I, you know, I'm, I'm pretty okay with that change. Uh, it slows him down a little bit, but you know, it's nothing, uh, nothing tragic towards the hero. So, so far, I mean, again, you know, he has even more regen um, from his team. They're doing a really good job at letting him uh, just go ahead and farm up. Right now, he is sitting at a 10 and 5 creep score compared to Dr. Repulsor's 5 and 2. So, he's doing a really great job at controlling that lane. Um, why didn't I drink beer? Um, at doing a really great job at controlling the last to deny. And once he gets started, 
you can see 74 out of 80 damage. I'm pointing at the screen, so I have to use my mouse uh, to indicate where my finger is, because you guys cannot see my hands most of the time. Uh, and then Dr. Repulsor is only at 59 out of 69, so he really has a base damage advantage here. And one of the things um, that I think takes a lot of practice with Soul Stealers beyond knowing when to use your hands, knowing when to use your ult, is really dealing with a constantly changing base damage um, and still doing a really good job with all the last hits because it's tricky. So he's sitting here, he's got his bottle in about four minutes. You know, that's that's nothing. That, that's fine. It's perfectly timing. Mean, you'd look at a little bit earlier, just a teensy bit earlier, so you can actually get that four minute rune. But even leaving the lane just to get a rune at this point is. Um, can be a little bit uh, detrimental to your farm just because you know even losing you know three creep kills let's say you lose three creep kills because i don't know your landing opponent does a really good job at, at, at burning your lane down oh we do see the really nice demon hands there you just see the damage that's able to come out and he actually gets a kill on dr repulsor really nice gank there by the glacius um you know positioning is everything especially when you manage to get that really nice um just slowing ability from the glacius to really kind of let soul sealer set up those hands and you see when you're able to connect with them, uh, you're, you can just put, put out a, a, a ridiculous amount of damage. You can see a level 5 Soul Sealer um, can do like a shit ton of damage. What is that, 225 damage? Uh, yeah, I think so. Uh, it, it, it's ridiculous, it really is. And so the, the Hellboard team is really focusing on this Soul Sealer, but it's, it's not doing too much. You know, he's not making the risks of running around, leaving the lane for that rune at the 4 minute when he could have. He just let his team pick up and let his team come to mid. Um, that's a, that's a pretty good change. I think he was kind of scouting out to see if he could stack that with a demon hand, but I, I actually have no idea. I have no idea what, what was going on there. Alright, so we do see he has boots as well. You know, it, it's really early in the game, and he's already pulling uh, 285 gold per minute. That's a very soul stealer thing um, to get that GPM that high, just because, you know, your ability to control the lane is so... Um, amazing and really I mean just look at this base damage so early 90 to 96 um, it, it, it it's pretty hard at, at this point for doctor to really land against that he really has to use his frenzy uh, as well as his uh, opposing charges to get those last hits you can see the soul stealer has the ability to play fairly aggressive on him even the auto attacks do significant damage uh, to the doctor repulsor at this point he's just kind of scouting out Ooh, a regen rune um, if, if you're playing early game soul stealer and you get this early regen rune, it's, uh, it's, uh, it helps your farm a little bit, uh, a little bit, getting a full mana bar uh, of demon hands for free. Because, you know, Soul Stealer is really kind of only capped in his farming by his demon hands, and that's why this um, Glacius uh, partner is just so so good with Soul Stealer, because it really lets you use your demon hands uh, quite, a, quite a bit, quite, quite, a, quite a little bit. So one of the parts that I really... I'm kind of doubting my own Soul Stealer play, um, is when I should help my team and when I should be walking the team fights versus when I should just be farming. Um, I really feel like Soul Stealer is the kind of hero that is on a, a timer. He has a very short lifespan, right? You know, it, it gets to a point where two demon hands doesn't kill a creep wave anymore, and his farm goes down quite a bit. I mean, at that point, a lot of the reason is that, you know, your team is moving around, and if you don't have a big farm at that point, uh, it's going to be very hard for you to kind of overcome the other team's carry. It's very easy for Soul Stealer to have momentum and to carry that throughout the game, but you really, really need that key early momentum. Uh, I'd be interested to see when he actually gets it. We are going to go ahead and speed up this replay a little bit, because, you know, we're not... We, we know kind of how to last hit creeps, right? For those of you that don't know, at level 7, two waves will clear a creep wave completely. You want to time it so that your last wave... Um, hits the range creep as well so you can actually go ahead and clear the entire creep wave with two hits um, instead of just the melee you can see right there he uses um the ability to hit it and then just one hits the range creep we do see a gank attempt here onto the soul stealer i think i just saw wretched head with the alt a little bit uh, which is which is unfortunate but you know they're really trying to slow down soul stealer at this point and again you know we're not really worried about what's going on in the rest of the game because we are talking about soul stealer today I'll also be interested to see what kind of item build he chooses to go with. You know, the traditional kind of, um, I don't want to say end game, but you know, the end of the mid game build for Soul Stealer is you kind of want Shrunken Head, Portal Key, and um, Geometer Spain, right? Those are the kind of the three items that make Soul Stealer really good. Because one, you have, a, you have great positioning. Two, you have that really great magic community that lets you be all up in people's shit. And then you have the Geobane, which gives you a ton of damage. Uh, it gives you that really nice illusions proc as well. 
and all of that fun stuff. So that's a really great item to pick up on him. Um, I'm interested to see the Ori. You know, some people really like that portal key super early on him just because it's so positionally advantageous and Solcular is like a hundred percent position but you see he's just he's pegging away at this mid lane over and over again anytime there's not somebody there he just says fuck it and he pushes the tower um you know Solcular can do it so early just because of his ability uh to really keep uh keep that lane pushed by clearing the creep waves uh you do see that he did pick up the mighty blade now, I've seen some people go for Mighty Blade and then transition into Portal Key, rather than going Mighty Blade all the way to Shrunken Head and then going into Portal Key. Again, Soul Stealer is very stylistic, which is part of the reason that I really like Soul Stealer. Um, if you were to watch this and then you were to go to watch another high tier Soul Stealer play, um, I think you would find surprising amount of differences <clears throat> um, in their play, uh, which really makes the hero interesting. Another thing to keep in mind is look at this treads, okay? He's constantly, that is a very large tooltip bar. That is like intimidatingly large. You can't, you can't see it, but I'm, I'm measuring it with my eyes. And, um, that's, that's a, that's a large, I mean, look at this. <coughs> oh my god, it's like coughing in. I mean, like, this is like, this is an av I feel comfortable with this, this replay bar, or replay bar tooltip bar, but this one makes me feel uncomfortable. But he's really doing a great job of cycling it, right? Right now he's not really doing anything, so he's regening a little bit more mana with Int, switches the strengths just to be less likely to die. Uh, you see he's just constantly switching, switching, switching. When he was attacking the tower, he made sure he was in agility. When he's using his bottle, he's making sure he's in agility. And those are just because it sets your max lower, so when you reach your max, um, it puts you up to it when you switch your treads. Um, you know, it's a pretty common technique, it's nothing super advanced. I suppose that most of you probably know of it, but make sure that when you get Steam Boots, you're actually using them to their maximum potential, because I'm not sure that they're quite as worth it if you're not using that. Goes for a little bit of a blind ultimate there, there it doesn't look like it was too effective, but you can see it's about the 13 minute mark right now, and his team is all grouped up. Again, I'm doing hand gestures that you cannot see, but they're all grouped up, um, and they're really pushing into this tower. Um, they've kind of hit a really good timing. You know, Soul Stealer is level 10. He's got the level 2 Demon Hands. He's got ridiculous base damage right now. He's even got a little bit of minus armor. He's got a good set of HP. Uh, he's got the Ophelia buff that gives him more attack speed. And so his team is in a position right now where they can make the opposing team extremely uncomfortable by pushing a tier, a tier 2 tower as a team. You know, they weren't worried about, okay, well, we have to get all first tier towers down first. They're just, they had an opportunity to push it, and so they are taking it. I really like that. That's really good kind of uh, momentum -y play, which is some of the strongest play that, of course, you can do in Heroes of New Earth. And so he's just going to continue. He's just going to clear the creep wave as it comes here. So they have free reign over this tower. You can see the Ophelia minion going ahead and tanking that. Um, I don't know if Ophelia had the charges. Yeah, it looks like she does have the charges in this patch. Uh, which Actually, I don't know if that's charges or if that is... Um oh, it, it says right there. One charge every 30 seconds. Just kidding. Just kidding. Sometimes they get mixed up on patches. I don't know about you guys, but looking at old replays. And so you see, one of the one of the more important things in this game, really, to me, is that Tactical Repulsor is not farming very well. You know, he's sitting at like 225 GPM, um, which which isn't that great. You know, they have Forsaken Archer, who is sitting at you know 365 GPM. But then you look at Soul Stealer, right? He's sitting at 437 gold per minute. And that is really what makes Soul Stealer such an amazing hero, is the ability to get that farm so early. I think a lot of people also really underestimate Dread as a skill. Uh, you know, when you hit that mid-game and you're so far ahead in levels because you're fucking Soul Stealer, Dread is really powerful. Uh, the Minus Armor is really good. It helps your entire team when they're auto-attacking. Uh, it's, it's, it's really good, guys. Don't underestimate. You know, I think we, we live in kind of a Han world right now. As we completely ignore the team fight because I can't reach my lock button quick enough. <laughs> it looks like the, the Legion team overextended here a little bit. Um, it was just kind of a positioning error. You know, they didn't really have their team organized. Uh, the Hellboy team did a really great job capitalizing on it. You know, they have a really good team for that. You know, Dacker Repulsor, Myrmidon, uh, Wretched Hag, a lot of heroes that are really able to move around. I'm not sure if Soul Sealer is actually going to be able to get out of here. Uh, that Shrunken Head pickup that we, we just saw was, is uh, doing a really good job just barely letting me away. <laughs> a little bit of a blind ult there by Soul Stealer. If they knew that he was juking there, uh, they were in a very bad spot if they actually chased him. But it does look like uh, uh, like Scandal is going to be able to get away here. 
And I really like uh, that super early. Oh, I really like that TP. You know, a lot of people, empty bottle, under half HP, are just going to TP home and run here to this bottom lane. But, you know, the entire Hellborn team is top. And he knows that. And so he's able to just sit here and uh, farm bot really quickly. Uh, really nice, subtle decision making that really makes a huge difference at GPM, guys. Uh, little decisions like this are way bigger than a lot of people give them credit. Uh, you know, deciding the timing on going and killing a neutral camp, deciding on the timing to just go to lanes and farm, deciding on the timings when you mess around with your team doing stuff that you don't need to be doing, all make huge impacts on your GPM. You know, I see a lot of people that play supports, and they think that they're really good support players, but their decision making is just not there as far as what they need to be doing when. And, you know, it's very easy to feel good about when you're playing support and you're not doing that. Uh, uh, and to kind of not be doing your job very well and not really notice it. And it's kind of the same with something like Soul Stealer, right? It's really easy to have a decent gold per minute with Soul Stealer. But to really cap it out, to really get the good farm on him, uh, you really have to have that solid decision making and knowing when to go where. You can see that basically this entire game he's been farming something with very few exceptions. Uh, even when he was doing that to that push bot, he was still farming creep waves. He was still getting stuff done besides just hanging around, which is so painful in Soul Sealer. You can see that I think this is the first time he's been doing the Ancients this game. Uh, it was a double stack. And uh, he looks like he's just going to do... Uh, 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 just a few, and then he's going to go ahead and back out. You know, he doesn't want to blow his haste rune for no reason. He really wants to keep that, because uh, it, it, it's, it's so strong. Again, anything that helps your positioning on Soul Stealer uh, is absolutely pivotal. You can see his creep score right now, 129 creep scores. Uh, creep kills. And 17 denies. You know, I <laughs> we actually see Forsaken Archer down here with 40 denies. She's been busy. Any hero that, like, gives you a benefit for killing creeps, you know, like uh, uh, Soul Reaper or, or Forsaken Archer Skeletons. People tend to be really, really focused on those denies a little bit more than usual. So he's just going to go back here to mid lane. Uh, he's just going to get his farm on again. Again, you know, uh, we're in a phase of the game where he really really just kind of wants to, to farm up. Uh, he wants that portal key. He wants to get to that core item set. If the Hellborn team, like, lets him have a, uh, a, a hole that lets him exploit them, He'll use it, but in the meantime, he's perfectly content uh, to use it. I actually really like he used the haste rune uh, for rune control. Let him very quickly get to that other haste rune uh, and pick it up. The timing on that is important. Uh, you know, things like when you get an illusion rune bottom and using it for extra scouting before the rune pops, using the haste rune to actually get the runes, um, intelligent use of the runes is another thing that is a subtle little difference uh, that can make quite a big difference in the actual game. And so I assume at this point, uh, the scandal is going to be going for a portal key. Uh, some soul stealers like to do that old kind of Chinese Dota, old school, um, uh, uh, no portal key build, which I think is interesting, which I think is, is worth exploring a little bit more. But Han is such a positionally dependent game that I still, I still really like the portal key on the soul stealer. Um, one of the ways that you can get good at something like Soul Stealer without necessarily playing Soul Stealer every game uh, is to play really positionally dependent heroes. You know, I don't think I really truly understood the importance of positioning until I started playing a lot of Aluna. Because if you're playing Aluna and you have a, a good farm and you have good items and all that, uh, you can just you just fucking die if you have bad positioning. You don't do anything. You know, you get a power throw and then you you die. But if you have really great positioning uh, on a Luna, you're able to deal out a ton of damage in team fights. You're able to get off really good stuns, really good power throws, um, and so it really kind of forces you to either be a failure or to have good positioning. Uh, other ones that come to mind are like I really think that Glacius is very positionally independent. Uh, I think that Magnus is a huge one. Playing a lot of the heroes like these um, can do a good job of really uh, teaching you how to position in general, which will increase your soul stealer play. Ooh, just an absolutely ridiculous ultimate there by Behemoth. Let's just watch this again. Oh, where are you, Behemoth? Where are you? All right, all right. We have to watch this. You see, uh, Behemoth was a portal key. It's just absolutely devastating uh, for reasons that will quickly become apparent. Oh, this video is now about this Behemoth ultimate. Oh. 
No! Alright, here we go. Just just add like Flight of the Valkyries. Go to YouTube, uh, type in uh, uh, type in that and then just just watch it with us. It's gonna be glorious. Oh, oh, he's thinking about it. He's think. Oh, oh my God. Oh, look at Soul Stealer. Oh, oh my God. I know what you're thinking right now. I know what you're thinking right now. It was pretty hot to hear Humley, 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 Humley say that. Ah, oh, that's amazing. I have to say that you know the whole like Behemoth Ultimate. Is probably the most satisfying thing in the entire game. Ooh, will Sizzler actually be able to get Annihilation here? I'm not sure what the timer on Annihilation is. You know, how close the kills actually have to be. Oh, he just barely gets caught by the weed field. Uh, a couple demon hands there, and he probably would have been able to actually get the kill on Myrmidon. Uh, I think that still would have been Annihilation. I feel like in my heart that that still would have been Annihilation. But alas, Myrmidon hiding up here, being a little cocktease. And he does actually go down to Scandal, uh, but it is at this point too late for the Annihilation. An honorary Annihilation for Scandal on the Soul Stealer. And so, yeah, we did see that, obviously. Uh, we saw him use the, the portal key pick up there. Again, you know, using his TPs to really get to farming spots very quickly, uh, doing a really great job farming. We do see him at 535 GPM. You know, so next time you're playing Soul Stealer and you think you're doing really good at 400 GPM, uh, just remember that it could be a lot higher uh, if you use uh, really good farming decisions. And if you're Behemoth, behemoth Hands, you a free uh, five kill team fight. That can help as well. Uh, it's pretty good. So we saw him really kind of transition, right? He was only 1-0-1, like 22 minutes into the game. Uh, and then he really transitioned right to uh, dominating everybody in the entire game. We do see an arrow there <laughs> by Valkyrie uh, into an ultimate from Soul Stealer. That's probably going to give them a really powerful push. Uh, we're going to speed it up a little bit once again. Uh, Soul Stealer is also a really good hero to help with Kongor because of that dread. He did a ton of damage. If you see something like... Um, you know, uh, Andravana, Soul Stealer, uh, it really helps you melt down that, that Concord quite quickly. Helps if you're Hellborn team as well, you know. Just, just, just saying. Just saying. Oh, Billy. Okay, we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna go to Mach 8. Uh, it's a technical term for 8x speed on Heroes of New and 3 plays. Did you guys know that if you speed up a replay and you're watching with somebody else, they get absolutely decent, like, incredibly because it's not actually 2x it's just like trying to be like i'm kind of like 2x let me see how fast your computer is and so it's like uh, uh impossible to watch replays in anything higher than 1x speed with a friend so if you would like me to do great great replay cast where i'm able to actually go fast uh you should probably tell us to to make that a goddamn feature to watch replays with other people and so once again, uh, we see another absolutely ridiculous team fight. Really good positioning on that ultimate. He was really kind of where he needed to be to do a lot of damage to the important heroes. Uh, and it looks like they're are probably going to be able to get for second archer. You know, it's really hard to juke a soul stealer. Uh, he just can spread damage. You see, spreads damage over here. He spreads damage over there, and he gets a second quad kill of the game. And we do see the GG well played come out. Uh, I was really interested to see. We saw him kind of very patiently building up his farm. And then only when the opportunities really presented himself did he actually use it uh, to get quad kills back to back and just win the game. Uh, so, you know, I think what I'm taking from that is that I tend to think of his demon hands as so powerful that I overuse them mid game, trying to uh, bounce around to team fights that aren't really happening. And so we are going to take a look at another scandal game on Soul Stealer. Uh, I don't know uh, what replays I have. I'm probably just going to pick a replay. And we will get to that in just a second. Hello, and we are back with part two of our look at uh, Scandal here on his little Soul Stealer play. Uh, this replay was marked in my replay folders as uh, PHB UNRL number five, or no, UNGL number five. Yes, that seems like something that is uh, real. I, I don't know. I don't know what this is from, but it's PHB. It's Scandal on Soul Stealer, and that is good enough for us. We see really great use right off the bat. Actually going ahead and using that Courier to Scout. Let's just let's watch Scandal creep log here. I wanna see. Oh, Scandal. Scandal, I'm disappointed. This is intentional. See this the the opposing team is gonna think that this is actually their hero, right? Because he's walking out front. And so they're gonna spend the entire game trying to kill this creep. Uh, and they're gonna be a little bit embarrassed when that actually doesn't happen. Uh, you can see Puffmaster's putting all of his attention and he actually thought he got first blood there. Uh, and it turns out it was just a creep kill. But we do see uh, Soul Stealer here going up in mid against 
a Puppet Master. You know, Puppet Master, not the highest base damage in the world. It's pretty good. You see they have similar starting items. Mark of the Novice versus the uh, um, Duck Boots. And he, he does start about uh, 12 lower. He's only about tw uh, 10 now. And now 8. You can see that Soul Stealer, the super early creep kills are just so important. Uh, those early charges on Soul Steel, which is a very imp uh, appropriate name. Uh, are just so imperative to the, kind of the pace and the tempo of the, the lane, at least until you get Demon Hands, and then you can really kind of use those. But you'd much rather use them for harassing than you would for last hitting. So it'll be interesting to see how aggressive uh, uh, Scandal is able to play on Puffin Master. Uh, you know, Puffin Master uh, can do a, a decent amount of harassing. Uh, you know, especially if he chooses to actually harass with Whiplash, it can be, it can be pretty good. But, you know, in general, you kind of need to use it to last hit, especially against something like a Soul Stealer. Uh, so I wouldn't be surprised if we saw him go ahead and just use Whiplash to, to last hit. We do see he's up to five charges now, uh, and that has almost evened up. Uh, he's just a little bit behind still. But right off the bat, you know, level three using those Demon Hands, you see two Demon Hands, and Pump Master is already under half HP. Um, those early Demon Hands, this is a big thing that I feel like I need to work on in my Soul Stealer game, is, you know, before you're even fucking remotely close to Bottle. I'm swearing a lot today. You know, he's only at, like, halfway there. Uh, just using his demon hands to really, really harass uh, this Puffin Master. He knew he, was, he wasn't he was going to get the kill, and he knew that Puffin Master was going to have to use the health pot there. Uh, so he went ahead and animation canceled uh, the actual demon hands. <laughs> he's animation canceling it quite a few times, uh, trying to decide between hitting it and not. He does have to be a little bit careful, though, because, you know, if Puffin Master does manage to get both disables, uh, he can do a fair bit of damage just in that nick of time, in, in that small period of time. I would use Soul Sailor. does manage to get an early reach in rune. Uh, definitely one of the more powerful early runes on him. Uh, you know, Illusion is good, but if you kill it with your Illusion, you kill Creep with an Illusion, you don't actually get the soul for it on your Soul Stealer. Uh, but uh, Double Damage is also a very, very good early rune for him. Oh, we see right here, uh, Puppet Master trying to put out some early damage on him. Just doing, you know, a fair bit of harass. He's not trying to kill him, he's just trying to really make him uh, uh, blow that health pot and kind of get them even up because he had to use it uh, early as well. Go ahead and using that Demon Hand just to get that last hit. Uh, these these early lasts are really important. Again, you know, I know I've said that like 20 or 30,000 times in this cast already, but the initial early last hits in this game, the first five minutes of the game, are so important on Soul Stealer. You really need to build up those souls. You really need to build up that lane position. Um, that You really need to get that bottle and be in a position uh, where you can really, really, really kind of get that momentum going early and keep it going for the rest of the game. So I'm going to go ahead and speed this up a little bit. The, again, you know, the primary thing that I'm interested in you know, we can talk about these little details all day, but the primary thing I'm interested in is when he chooses to start moving with his team, when he chooses to start participating in team fights, versus when he's just doing farming. And when he's doing the farming, when does he choose to get neutrals? When does he choose to do all of that fun stuff? Really kind of the uh, more broad picture strokes and uh, how he manages to kind of transition throughout the entire game. See a lot of a lot of stuff going down here. Oh, we actually have Insania here on Demented Shaman, a particularly handsome nerd. Uh, if you're not familiar with him, he does uh, do a lot of really great stuff for game replays, which is a pretty handsome site. Oh, I haven't plugged Reddit yet today. Oh my God, go to Here's the New Earth subreddit. It's reddit.com slash r slash Here's the New Earth. Oh my God, it's so good. Why aren't you there right now? Oh, you're crazy if you're not on that subreddit. It's where I post. Uh, but we see he's just continuing to farm here mid. He does have his bottle. He got it uh, about the same... Let's just say the same time. See, I don't pay attention to things. I just... I say things with confidence and retrospect. And uh, people just agree with it. Prove me wrong. Prove me wrong. Uh, so you see, we actually do see a really early uh, homecoming stone on Soul Sealer as well. I think he wants to be in a position where... Uh, he can help his team if they get like hyper dived or something. Again, you know, you need to have a lot of mana to do that, which is difficult on Soul Sealer because you want to spend as much mana as possible on really farming. Uh, it does look like he is going to be able to pick up an invis in here. I'm um, just if he pops it right away because he feels like he needs the mana, or if he wants to save it and try and use uh, just his last hitting skills to really get the creeps. I'm um, just go ahead and getting rid of a minor totem. I want to see did he sell that or did he put it on the bird? He actually did put it on the bird. Um, probably looking to get a power supply at some point, uh, and wants to just go ahead and keep it around for now. Oh, I kind of feel bad for that Crypto Disciple. That was a little bit sad. We're just going to watch this. We're still focused on Soul Sealer. That's alright. That's right. We can watch some sweet, sweet little Magnus plays here. Oh, I love Magnus. I'm playing Magnus so much lately. On my alt account. Oh, he's so good. All 
All right, so we've hit the magical, the legendary level seven on the Soul Dealer about seven minutes into the game. Spot a level a minute. Um, we do see that right now he's pulling about 250 GPM and about 280, uh, 280, about 400 experience per minute. Uh, he bubbles this in about 450, so he's doing quite well in whatever lane he is. We don't give a shit about the rest of the game. We're looking at Soul Stealer. Uh, it does look like the rune spawned somewhere. Oh, Pharaoh picked up uh, the rune, whatever it was. Or, I don't know what it was. Maybe it was Invis. And Soul Sealer continues to farm. Cough. Cough. He does actually bring himself a mana pot. Uh, that's a small little little uh, little change. Looks like he wants to kill this triple stack uh, in order to kill that triple stack as quickly as possible. Uh, I was gonna say he got the mana pot to kill it, but it, I just I was kidding, guys. I was being sarcastic. Don't you guys understand sarcasm? <laughs> but you know that little mana pot. Uh, I'm actually not sure if he even bought it, or if maybe his teammates bought him for it, bought it for him. But it really gives him kind of that boost of mana that he needs. Picking up a ward, uh, that's another small thing, you know, if you need a ward placed in, like, an area that's really close to mid, uh, don't be afraid to just go ahead and bring it to your to your mid so that you don't have to worry about it. Uh, if you need the rune light or the ward, like, over here and something and your mid's not going there, uh, it's it's not the best idea to give it to them. But you see there's a lot of action here going on top, and Soul Sealer is just really comfortable uh, staying in mid. He doesn't want to get behind that puppet, he doesn't want to give that puppet free reign, um, and that's I think that's actually a really good idea. You see right now he's at uh, 273 GPM. About to kill a triple triple stack of hard camps. And uh, just like that, that's like a, a 20 G, uh, GPM boost. Which is not at all insignificant. Do not underestimate uh, those little boosts, especially early game. You know, you get that little jump that gets you to your, your initial item that you need faster, which can prevent you from dying, uh, or all kinds of fun stuff like that. And, you know, again, he's just he's putting a lot of pressure on this tower. Um, the Legion team does not really seem to want to come mid. They really seem dedicated uh, to this top lane, right? And so he's pretty comfortable uh, just continuing to put pressure here on the middle the middle lane. And you can see he's, only, he's just bouncing around. He's picking up the runes. And uh, he's doing a really great job of, of room control as well. You know, there's only so much Puppet Master can do. You don't want to lose an entire wave of creep experience. Uh, and Soul Sealer is just so ridiculous at pushing the, the, the wave. Especially, again, because, you know, he had that early game uh, advantage. He was doing quite well. We do see the same thing again. He goes for a Mighty Blade. He did pick up that Power Supply as well. Um, just get Power Supply every game. It, it, like, if you have to ask, like, in situations that you should get Power Supply, always get it until you learn when you don't need it. Because just the, 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 the mana and health regen that you get, especially during team fights, uh, just enough to get that one last spell out that saves your life, that kills somebody, that saves a teammate, or something like that, is just so important. Uh, for the cost, it's just ridiculous. I mean, you should be starting with minor totems anyway, right? Just because minor totems are so so attractive. Uh, they're, they're one of the most attractive items. They're a little bit cheap, but... We do see... I'm really hoping that he does a double pull with this. If he manages to stack both these camps, somebody's... Oh, no! No! Oh, I got my hopes up. <laughs> I <laughs> got my hopes up there a little bit. We do see Magmas oh, just walking around. He's being a baller. That was, a good, that was a good idea in theory, right? To stack these with illusions. Uh, I like the theory. But again, look at how hard that the Legion team is pressing this top lane. You know, at this point, I'd be really, really tempted to come here uh, to top lane as Soul Stealer. Uh, instead, he manages to get this tower mid. Uh, and then he actually it looks like he's going to TP bottom. You know, see, again, he's really, really resisting the urge to get in these positions where he's very likely to die. He's very likely to not actually do that much. You know, Demon Hands do a shit ton of damage early, uh, but only if your positioning is really, really spot on. Uh, again, you know, the, the Legion team, or the Hellborn, I keep calling them Legion team, I think. The Hellborn team uh, ported up here, and Soul Stealer not included, uh, but it's an, it is enough to drive off the Legion team. Uh, easy peasy just by themselves. And so Soul Sealer is just sitting here bottom and he's farming. Uh, I really like that. You know, you really, 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 for the eighth time in the last 30 seconds, really need that early momentum on Soul Stealer. And I'm already seeing that. You know, I don't want I don't want you guys to think of this as Conley has told me to ignore my team until I'm fucking ready uh, on every hero ever, in every situation ever. But in very specific situations, uh, we do see Scandal going down here. This was probably not the safest spot in the world, but he was a little bit trapped just because they were already roaming through their jungle. Um, in very specific situations, uh, it's probably sometimes a good idea 
to go ahead and ignore your team. I wouldn't I wouldn't even recommend playing Soul Stealer a lot in pubs. I think that there are better pubs not mid heroes than Soul Stealer if that's the kind of thing you're looking for. As he really does need a team that's like, Alright, I promise we're not gonna go seventeen and one in the first ten minutes. Like, I promise, don't worry about it. So it is the Legion team is doing a really decent job here. Uh, kind of making a comeback, punishing the mistakes of the Hellborn team, uh, and really getting this Puff Master farmed up. Uh, if this were a couple months, uh, I was going to say a couple months later, you'd have Occam's Dispodes. Just kidding. See, this game isn't uh, as far behind, I think. Uh, I don't know what patch this is on or when this came out. Actually, no, because the, 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 the UNGL uh, stuff has not been, was not that long ago, especially number five. Uh, I'm kind of interested in the actual, the math behind Alchemist Bones now. Uh, they still seem like they're really, really good. I'm just not sure like who they are worth on now versus who they were worth on before, because uh, they were worth worth it on basically everything, uh, especially ranged before. No, I'm not sure. I think you have to be a little bit more selective now, uh, with the uh, 20, 20 second added, maybe 30, 20, 20, 20 to 30 seconds added on the timer. Now we're talking about Puppet Master. Let's go see what the fuck Soul Stealer is doing. Uh, why can't I double click this to go to Soul Stealer? Well, anyway, Soul Stealer died right here. That's that's sad. That's a sad day for Soul Stealer. Here, I'm gonna lock it on his death spot so that we can see where he died. Brilliant, brilliant. A lot of stuff is happening now. You see, I kind of almost feel like you know he's doing a lot of moving around that is actually leading to him dying. Uh, I almost feel like he should he should be tightening up like he was really early game, uh, but I guess he's just kind of run out of towers to pressure like that. And so he's kind of having to adapt a little bit. Is this going to work now? Yeah, now it'll work. Oh, because I have it unlocked. This is my own private discussion with myself. Why doesn't that work? Why can't I do that? Why isn't that a thing? That's two. Make that a thing. I mean, I, I could press V. Like, I click on somebody and then press V. But I don't want to do that. So we do see Soul Stealer here getting a really nice triple triple stack of creep camps. Uh, we do see Soul Stealer is up to about 400, 400, 379 gold per minute, just about 379. Uh, and he's sitting at 461 GPM. Uh, there was a small lead for the Legion team, but again, oh, look at this. Early Pestilence Andromeda Soul Stealer. Uh, the minus armor on that is, is just obnoxious for Kongor. Can't even get the bugs off of himself with a little um, bondage outfit that, Soul, that Kongor wears. Uh, it does look like the, the Legion team is choosing to try and go on this. I'm not sure that's the best decision uh, in the entire world. So Sealer does manage to get the Demon Hand off and kill that Magnus just at the last second. Uh, and he should have some kind of angle here for Demon Hands. Ooh, it's going to be close. I'm not sure if he's... Yeah, he does actually manage to get it. And he gets a kill on Puppet Master. Uh, again, really great positioning there by Scandal. You see that if he had made a different uh, positioning choice there, it just would not have happened. He probably could chase down this Demented Shaman if he really wanted to. But he does not need to because Pharaoh is a Giga Baller uh, being played by Unique Phaser. Uh, goes and just spikes him off with that uh, snot, snot throw of death. And you see just the ability of Soul to push towers. Uh, when those creeps do not show up, he does he does amazing work. He picks up his portal key right here uh, about 22 minutes into the game. And that is, um, that is good. That is good. I need a thesaurus, guys. Look up words for, like, pretty good, and, uh, I don't even know what I say a lot. It's pretty bad. It looks like he is probably going to get away here fine, uh, and then turn around and do a really great... Actually, let's look at that again. Let's look at that at regular speed, uh, just because I think that the, uh, the positioning there was really great. So we do have, once again, Pharaoh being really awesome. He's kind of in the vicinity. We do have Andrew as well. So when Magnus stuns in, you know, we see Pharaoh run over right away. Uh, he manages to get a really nice ultimate off. And then, you know, Soul Stealer comes back. He gets just within range. You see, he, he did his other Demon Hand right there. Uh, I guess really quick, I'm going to take this as an opportunity to kind of tell you guys how Demon Hands are. Uh, you can see that the positioning where I have Soul Stealer right now on the camera, the Demon Hand, the last Demon Hand, basically touches to the edge of the screen. The middle one is actually... Look, the Demon Hands are huge, guys. Okay? Like, if you're scared of playing Soul Stealer because you think that Demon Hands are, like, fucking impossible to hit, I promise you they're not. Uh, the Demon Hands are, are way bigger than they feel. Uh, the animation, I think they I think they actually expanded it, and it used to be even smaller. But, like, Demon Hands are big. Like, the middle Demon Hand is, like, fucking like this. Uh, you have a lot of area to work with. Even, like, the close one, like, still goes out to, like, I want to say, like, here. 
I feel like that's about right. And then, you know, uh, it's about from here to the edge of the screen uh, is where the far one reaches to. Uh, if you center your camera, it goes a little bit off screen to the left. I'm playing at 700, or uh, this is 1280 by 720 uh, is what my current resolution is. So if you're in a different aspect ratio, that's going to be way different. Uh, but I'm assuming you play in the same aspect ratio. Uh, it goes a little bit off the screen to your left. And so he walks up just enough to get the range on that. Immediately portal keys in and does the close one. Uh, it was really rapid fire. He was really confident in his demon hands, which can make a big difference. I'm not sure he wants to go back in on this. Uh, you know, they have the Demented Shaman. Corrupt Disciple is going to be a pain in the ass to kill uh, between, you know, uh, all, all his uh, his damage and the Demented Shaman right there. And yeah, they do, <laughs> they do pay for it. Uh, Scandal probably could have gotten away there. Again, you know, you're not working with complete information when you're playing a game. And that's why it's okay for lesser skilled players to actually watch replays like this and criticize much better players than them. It's because I have access to complete information. I have access to everything. And uh, I also have 2020 uh, hindsight, which is pretty good. Uh, we you see some, some uh, really nice stacks here. I think these stacks have been here for a while. I would like to see these turn into triple stacks and give those to Soul Stealer real quick uh, so we can get that little boost of farm. We do see he is at 444 gold per minute, uh, which is, of course, the mark of the beast, the 444. Uh, commonly uh, misset as 666, but that's actually just a rounding error. <laughs> so we do see. Uh, I, I think there's been a lot of really great warning in this game and all that stuff, just looking at the minimap. Again, not something I'm particularly paying attention to this game. Uh, really, really kind of focusing on that Soul Stealer. And so we have seen that, you know, he's he's at a point now where he can really make some big plays happen, um, but he's also in a place now where uh, he's he's in a place where bad things can happen to him, right? You know, we've seen him die a couple times um, when he really is going in, but he still has such amazing farm because he has so much early momentum. Uh, he has these really great creep stacks to work with. Um, we see he goes, he, he's maintaining that 440 um, GPM, which is pretty hard to do. Uh, you know, it goes up to 450 just from those creep stacks alone. You know, we're 25 minutes into the game. Uh, and when something immediately raises your GPM by any kind of noticeable number, that's a pretty significant gold boost for you at that moment. Uh, just because, just, you know, the, the pure way the math works out, it becomes pretty ridiculous. Uh, he did just pick up an item. I'll be interested to see if he brings it to himself right now. And, and also, I'll be interested to see what item he actually goes ahead and replaces. Uh, we see a lot of people, you know, replace that bottle. But uh, I really like my bottles. It's a really big team fight here. Uh, Soul Stealer coming in a little bit late. I'm not sure if he's actually even going to go in. Uh, it does look like he's going to come back in after they actually manage to get that kill. But it is four, four down three right now. And, you know, Witch Slayer is, is just about damn near dead. And he doesn't really have any cooldowns. Pharaoh as well. Running the fuck out of there. And it, it does look like the Legion team will probably be able to get a push out of this. I'm not entirely sure. Uh, and it'll be interesting to see. You know, Scanner goes right here to this middle lane. Uh, and he is going to be able to farm these creep waves once again. Yeah, so he did uh, pick up that power supply. He actually got rid of his his uh, his homecoming stone for that. Uh, I, you know, it's it, with the swap out trick. That's not too bad. I I, I really hope that Asu never takes out that TP swap out trick. Uh, at least the um, the vanilla one, I should say, where you you're not like Magnus portalting. I don't even know if that got fixed. Fair, that ain't, that ain't a real Demented Shaman. Settle down. Courier brought him something. Oh, a homecoming stone. So he got rid of the power supply so that he replaced with a homecoming stone. Uh, so he can really have that, that movement that he needs. Oh, look, they're like, um, uh, Forbidden Love. This is Romeo and this is Juliet. They're from two different families, but they're so similar that they're in love. That's so cute. Look at those little eyes, the little in love eyes. See, this is what I do when I have damn near nothing left to talk about on Soul Sealer at the moment. I just talk about wards and love. Now I'll put a little 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 heart here in, in post. Do it in post. I'm not really drawing a good heart here. Yeah. And so so now we're seeing kind of Soul really transition into uh, that kind of core and end mid game build that we were talking about. Where he gets that geo. Uh, that also frees you up for uh, a modifier if you wanted at some point in the game. Uh, you know, with something like Pestilence, who's probably already getting demonic, it might not be a bad choice to go ahead and get uh, some kind of modifier after the Geobane. And, oh, really nice ultimate position there. You see, he blinks in, and he just ults in such a good spot, especially with that trunken head, uh, when they can't really do anything to stop you. You can get that amazing position on those ults. Uh, Bumble's trying to TP out of there, but uh, so he just goes ahead and follows him and smacks him in the face. Oh, and he just goes right back to top and just goes right back to farming. You see, every second, he's trying to do something productive. 
uh, and that's really, really important. He's not abandoning his team or anything, but any opportunity he has to do something great, he's off doing it. All right. Oh, that was a nice, that was a nice drink of water. So it is see the creep count on him is really high, right? He's at 213 and 18. He's been doing just a great job at really being there. Uh, one of the things that I, I, I've been wanting to experiment on Soul Sealer is going for those boosted travel over the Steam Boots. But I feel like... I feel like he doesn't really need it necessarily. Just because he's so good at uh, clearing creep waves and having things to do all the time already. Uh, and you really don't want the other team to focus on you too late. Because, you know, there are important timings in here, here. We'll see if he actually goes in on this fight. Oh, look at that ultimate right there. Oh. Okay, all right, slow motion. Pharaoh with a really nice ultimate to set it off. You know, he gets that perfect stun off that lets him set it up, and uh, he gets the cape off. That is not going to be enough to save that Corrupted Disciple. Just perfect ultimate placement. Uh, patience is really big, and they're going to be able to get an absolutely free Congor here. They actually have a ridiculous Congor team, even with Pharaoh, whose Hellfire, of course, makes uh, Congor completely impotent. So I assume he's probably going to get rid of his bottle at this point. He's going ahead and drinking it up before he gets rid of it. Uh, and he did sell it off, I assume. So, you know, now when you're at a point where you're, you're Soul Stealer, you have uh, the Shrunken Head that gives you that immunity when you're in the middle of everybody. You have the Portal Key that lets you get there. And then you have the, the, the Geo Bane that really lets you put out a ton of damage. You know, 26 agility. It makes you attack faster. It gives you those illusions. Um, and, of course, you know, just the, the stats from the orb. Just such a great DPS item for uh, Soul Stealer. Really like that. And so, right now, they're going to be able to get a really nice push here on this top tower, probably. Uh, you know, the, the leader team's so spread out, so trying to get the farm on. But uh, it, it, it just, it, it really seems like, at this point, that the Hellborn team is uh, another really good team fight away from kind of clinching up the game. We just see Solcillar is at uh, uh, 9, 3, and 6. He's over 500 gold per minute, sitting at 540 gold per minute right now. Uh, he's just a farming machine, and a lot of it comes from really translating. Ooh, really nice swap there by Andro. Uh, it's going to let Soul Sealer get back into the fight and do a lot of damage here. This does not look like it's going to be that great uh, for the Hellborn team, unfortunately. And, you know, one of the, the true kind of challenges in Heroes of New Earth, at least for me, and I think a lot of people share this um, sentiment, is when you're ahead in the game, it's really kind of hard to say, Okay, now is the time to finish the game. I really kind of feel like those are uh, almost damn near fatal words. Because you try to do things like push up into a base with 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 their team. Wow, I don't know what sound just came out of my mouth. Uh, with their team there, and their team gets perfect positioning, they get perfect opportunities to initiate... Uh, and a lot of a lot of times it, it ends up like we just saw uh, with the Hellboy team getting kind of trounced there. So it's really a, a, a bit of a challenge to kind of get in a position where you can actually end the game. And so a lot of times, you know, it's similar to StarCraft, right? When you're ahead and if you just try to end the game, a lot of times it can fuck you over. But if you just use that as an opportunity to, uh, I, you know, I'm going to have to seal the phrase here, get more ahead. Uh, it, it can be really, really beneficial for you. And <laughs> you see that the Hellborn team, uh, you're not too, you're not too strong without your Soul Stealer. And so they do once again die. They did manage to get the two kills there, uh, but you know, not on the most important heroes in the world. Really, this Puppet Master and the Corrupted Disciple uh, are kind of the key for the Legion team. But you know, you still, you still have a Soul Stealer sitting at that super, super high, 535, 540. Uh, GPM. He's doing a really great job farming up. Uh, I'll be interested to see. Oh, he does have it. He has a wing bow right now. So you know that kind of that wing bow Geo Bane is just let him put out a ton of auto da attack damage. Uh, the attack speed is really great for him because he has that built-in uh, plus damage. You know he's sitting on plus 60 damage, which is you know probably like I don't know what plus 40 uh, if he were a, a normal hero because he starts with such low base damage. But it really solves a lot of his problems. You can really just go ahead and get those pure kind of attack speed agility items on him uh, and put out a shit ton of damage. I mean, you're looking at 281 <laughs> top end damage. It's just, it's absurd. 
And so now again we're in a position where they're trying to push up into the into the uh, opposing team's tower. Uh, it's going to be a little bit easier for them than it is for a lot of teams because Pharaoh uh, really allows them to get the good initiation up the hill, which is a challenge a lot. So if you have something like a behemoth uh, or something like that, you just see that he's using the token uh, as an opportunity to go ahead and try and kill this tower. It's going to be close. Oh, but they, they're doing very clever. They're not actually killing the Soul Stealer, and so he's not going to be able to use that token. Um, Oh, you did see the 10 charges from Corrupted Disciple brings it down to like 81 damage though, uh, and gives that 200 damage to Corrupted Disciple. He's gonna have to be careful with that, but you know, Shrunken Head obviously takes care of that problem quite a bit. Doing a little bit of counter ward here, but they do get, actually get a cut off. It uh, looks like he's gonna swap out Pharaoh, and Pharaoh will actually be able to get away from it. Uh, really nice swap there by Andromeda. There, I hit V. You happy, S2? Are you happy now? So he swaps out that token for a couple of TPs. Um, I'm not sure if he would even be really looking to pick up something at this point, uh, rather than saving for buybacks just in case. But you know, they are, they do have a, a pretty good advantage at this point. They are ahead by about 7,500 gold. So you know, they might be okay with uh, uh, not saving for buybacks at this point. But uh, buybacks are, they're, they're pretty good, especially if you have a way of getting back to the fight. I'm really a fan of the early buyback. I'll, I'll cover that in some other videos sometime. Uh, so again, you know, they're going to try to get this, they have the tower down, which makes it a lot easier. And uh, all kinds of fun initiation and fun things happening here. Uh, if this were a normal cast, I'm sure I would be uh, talking quite quickly. And you might be able to understand a few of the things I said. But alas, but alas, this is not. <laughs> nice little swap there by Andrew. Phil Siller just walks back in, punches uh Magnus in the face, and you saw just how much easier uh, it is to actually initiate up this hill once the tower is dead. So using that token uh, is just a super powerful way for the Hellborn team uh, to finish off the game, uh, really get that tower down, get that Rax, and using the positioning quite well. The poor, uh, the poor illusion taking the abuse from the puppet show. And so this 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 feels very much like it's just about over for the the Legion team, you know, their carries are not so farmed that they're outrageous. Uh, Frost was called here on Corrupted Disciple. Really great, but probably not enough. Oh, Billy. Oh, Billy. And, uh, so yeah, I kind of feel like, uh, we've seen a really great job here by the Soul Stealer getting that farm. Uh, he's got 4,000, gold at the moment. Uh, again, you know, he hasn't spent it on anything at this point. A lot of times at the end game, even if you want to get an item, like you see right now, he just spent, uh, no gold at all. No, I have no idea what I'm talking about. Um, if you're if you're at the end game, uh, just saving up for an item, like even if you wanted demonic at this point, which I don't I don't even know pestilence probably pestilence already has. But let's just say, let's just say that he wanted a demonic breastplate. Uh, you just kind of wait until you have the entire gold for it. That way, you always have enough to make sure that you can buy back. Because I, you know, it's too hard for me personally. Uh, I don't know about these pro, pro players, but it's too hard for me to work out levels plus losing gold on death and all that fun stuff to figure out how much gold I need. I got a really nice ultimate there. He was really all up in the shit, all up in their shit. Um, but uh, Corrupted Disciple had to trunk that up, but he's, he's, he's probably not going to get away here. Nope, he dies. And that should just about be GG's. Yep, GG's well played. come out. Uh, another really great job by Scandal. We saw how he really, really, really focuses on farming in that early game. He doesn't let kind of the top tower push... Um, scare him off from his job he really does a really great job farming he waits for kind of that core item set and for the opportunities to present themselves rather than going out and trying to find them uh, it's a really great job here by scandal on soul stealer i'm not sure what my next video is going to be uh, i kind of want to cast one of my games that got lost uh, into the abyss during the reset that's my best game i've ever played uh pretty much and it's lost so i, I kind of want to cast it but that's just an ego cast um, I might be doing some Mage Bane mid as well, uh, or something else. I'm not sure, but I uh, thank you guys for tuning in. I need a closing phrase that I should use every game, so go ahead and uh, tell me what you think I should end all my guests with. But for now, I'll see you guys later.